time. That was amazing, I actually. I love it. That spin is <laughs> epic. Epic. Welcome, everybody. We are going to be streaming some amazing fresco illustrations today with my friend Alec Liu. Welcome, Alec. Thank you for having me here. Of course. Chat, say hello. Alec is an amazing illustrator. Oh. Hello, hello. So give him some love. Uh, and while you are doing so, let us know where you're watching from, because we always like to hear that. Yeah. Alec is a San Francisco local, so he didn't have too far to come this yeah. morning. <laughs> but the traffic is bad. Though. It is. We can talk about that. Let's <laughs> talk about the traffic. Kerwin says that synchronization got me hyped up. Oh god, thank yeah. you so much. We didn't even practice. Amazing. What's up, Raseem? We've got Tim, we've got Jordan, Van Dam. How's it going? Everyone's laughing at our amazing spin. Very oh cool. God. Yeah. So chat, let us know where you're walking, watching from. I'll do a quick little uh, housekeeping before Alec introduces himself. We are gonna be streaming until 11.30, doing some awesome fresco illustration. Sounds great. Yes, uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But in 30 minutes, we're gonna be doing our chat and win. We're gonna be giving away a new gift. $30 gift card to Moo.com. It's an amazing place to get all of your stationary needs met. So you can get business cards, tote bags, stationary, all the good stuff. Mm. We'll do that in 30 minutes. And then at 11, so in an hour and a half, we're gonna be reviewing your submissions for the Daily Creative Challenge. So Jesus just finished uh, day three or day two of the challenge, day three. <laughs> whatever it is, the water challenge. We're gonna be looking at those on Discord in an hour and a half. So if you wanna work on those and then get them uploaded for some feedback, do so, and we will get those feedbacks for ya. Okay, that's it, and then we'll be back tomorrow. Too. We will be back tomorrow, yeah, yes. same time. Same time, same place, same spin, maybe same the other spin, way. Maybe, yeah, let's Who go knows? left. Yeah, let's do it, okay, tomorrow, we'll do that. Uh, Jordan says that, watching from Iowa. Very cool, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Glad to have you. Okay, so Alec, who are you? What do you do? What's your favorite animal? So, I want to start with my fa favorite animal. Okay. Which is a cat, but I own a dog. Hmm, I'm the same kind of person. Okay. I love cats, but I have a dog. But I love dog mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, yes. I'm a freelance illustrator. Um, my name is Nankin Alec Lou. Everybody just call me Alec. Hi, and Alec. I do a lot of editorial illustration um, because I think editorial illustration is so meaningful for me because it's always like a really deep, deeper meaning and yeah. voice to mm -hmm. talk about maybe article, what happening in the environment and mm -hmm. what's um, current situation and environmental issue, which which is the illustration we're going to create today. Yeah. Is talk about environment issue and how do how do we do uh, waste reduction? Yeah, cool. So I think I always want my art to be having a voice um, behind it. Mm -hmm. I feel like art is such an um, Im important instrument for us, for artists, to talk about something like Beyonce, you know, she talk about things in her music mm -hmm. and we can do it in our illustration, so. Yeah, that's our platform. Yeah, so. Totally. Be awesome illustrator, you know, like speak what you want. Right, yeah. yeah. So for people who don't know, specifically editorial illustration, uh, how would you describe that category of illustration? That's like what you would find in magazines. Or yeah, so editorial illustration you find a lot in like uh, magazines or like magazine cover, mm -hmm. newspaper. It's normally just an illustration is kind of, not kind of, it's like kind of just jazz out the article, don't make it so dull yeah. at the same time. Um, right. And, and at the same time, people need a lot of it, so you need a skill to actually have like conceptual or sometimes be funny, mm -hmm. you know, just grab the attention of readers. Yeah, yeah. give some sort of visual to yeah. whatever content is written. I think yeah. it's super important. Editorial illustration is one of my favorite types of things too, so I'm so excited to see what you make. Yeah. And <laughs> Howard says, Alec Liu, the Beyonce of illustration. Heck yeah. TM, 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 TM. Boop, 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 boop. Yes. Amazing. Also, Rasim says, everybody is from Georgia today. Is everybody watching from the South? Very hello. Cool. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna jump into this and you're working on Fresco. Yes, we're using Fresco today. Mm -hmm. So that is an iPad app or a mobile app. Uh, and we're gonna be working on the iPad Pro. So it's a beautiful drawing and painting app that was released pretty recently. So chat, if you are not familiar, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, it's an amazing combination of pixel brushes, vector brushes, mm -hmm. and live brushes, so like watercolor. Yeah. It's very, very cool. And you can then open things in Photoshop and Illustrator too. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you have your sketch? Yes, I actually already started a sketch, mm -hmm. which I, so I love this function is you can just do sketches. I start with 
just simply pencil mm -hmm. and paper and eraser and just scan it. And you can use this little image and go into camera roll mm -hmm. and just how I pour my sketches right here, which so you, I already did it. You actually drew on paper. Yes, I actually drew on Whoa. paper. <laughs> because my brain just doesn't really work when I draw on any digital device. Mm -hmm. So I just love that thing, the actual analog and stuff. Yeah. Where does this come from? Okay, we're <laughs> gonna tap this and delete this layer. What are and you? And this one. Cool. What about you, chat? Are you still on paper and pencil? Then do you scan it in? Do you do it all digital? I'm like you. I need to draw on paper first and like erase and move it around and then take a picture. Same here. Yeah. So I want to talk about a little of my process is literally just start with a bunch of small thumbnails mm. to get my composition right, to get what character goes where, how yeah. the environment and perspective go in. But this simple illustration, I literally just started doing characters because I think figure is so interesting for me and mm -hmm. I love them. Yeah. Um, all right, so today this sketch is about environmental issue and, sorry about that. And, <laughs> so popular on Instagram. And, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and waste reduction. So I just want to talk about like, I love people who actually go into Starbucks and coffee shop, bring their own mugs, yeah. and they're pulling out their re and reused straws. I just like, God, you're the sexiest people ever. <laughs> you're really it. taking yeah. it there. <laughs> yeah, so this is just three characters and doing something like Charlie's Angel Kung Fu Fi with like, mm -hmm. you know, fighting environmental issues with their reusable straws, you know, like tote bags and water bottle. I love them. Amazing. Yeah. And these are small things that anybody can do. Yeah. So anyone can be this Kung Fu fighter. Go on Amazon, get your straws. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So, and after that, I will do a refined sketch, which you see on the screen. And how I pick colors is I want it to be environmental, so this will be like green mostly. Mm -hmm. So I want the character really popped out. So I incorporate with like yellows, orange, or pink, like some warm color to mm -hmm. attract the, you know, what do we call that in the technical term, um, focal point. Right. Yeah, and I will always dabble a little black and white to balance everything, to tie everything together. Cool, so you use black and white as your like cohesive Yeah, element. like a refined line work, mm -hmm. which you don't see here in the, color study, I haven't really put the line right. work in. But. That's still a nice color study. Mine would be like boop, 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 like so messy, but that's really nice. This is like a hundredth attempt. So, okay, okay. So yeah, you need, I always I do a bunch of color study as well. I just want to make sure everything is cool and, mm -hmm. and ready to go. Nice, All so you right. are set up, I love it. So I normally use a pixel brush because I work JPEG and I don't really print them out a lot. Right, so that so. works for you. And we have a lot more options on this. And I'm using this brush's ink brush, natural anchor, oh. under all in ink. I found and I adjust it a little because what my style is really just filling all the shapes, you know, like shape of the the hair, the shape of skins. Mm -hmm. So I go in here and go on the shape dynamic, I turn off all the controls. So oh, wow. I can literally just draw. Uh, let's do a more <laughs> pink so you can see. You know, you just do like this. So everything is very equal line weight. Right. And you use fill tool. And oh, fill it. very nice. Then okay. you fill the one of the, the really quickly fill one shape. All right, let's get into it. Boom. So you're really just outlining and filling like a coloring book exactly. that you've made yourself. Yes. yes. Nice. Uh, Racim really likes the Kung Fu straw. Same, very cool. I was thinking drawing like a bigger one with boba. Mm -hmm. Dropping out because I'm a big boba fan. Yes. Do you have and a favorite boba shop? Oh my god, boba guys mm -hmm. in San Francisco are the best. There's go one there close to Francisco. this building. Oh really? Mm -hmm. no like way. a 10 minute walk. I gotta maybe. walk. I gotta go there. Yeah, to gotta go. Be gotta go. Me. <laughs> we can. We should uh, All right, let's start it. feeling some colors. Mm -hmm. All right. I normally like to do the face first because um, when I get a, a skin tone down. I normally can adjust some like hair color around it and it's easier that way. Right. I go to the face first as well, but it's mostly because that's what I like the most. Yeah. That's what I like to draw, so I go there first. And also people just go into a face right away. Mm -hmm. you know? Like that's that's how the viewer will normally go. Yeah. The eyes and hands. Yep. Okay. So what I did, I, I dropped the color here. So you literally just one finger hold it. And go to the color in the color study right here, and Boom. you got you select the pink one. All nice. Right. So you can see that's filled the foreground color over in the left. Right. Cool. All right, and we just stick in. 
Wow, look at your cute little sketch. There we go. She uh, is so determined. Yeah, she's ready. I like uh, her. One thing, I want to I want to have a sketch layer on top ah. and turn it into multiply. Mm-hmm. So I can still have the line where it's my guide. Turn the opacity down a little. And I would just want to paint on this one. Very nice. Yeah. It's always so interesting to see a different artist's process. Yours seems to be very thought out. You're like, I do this, and I do this, and I do this. That's probably my OCD personality. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's how I clean, too. Everything needs to be dust first before I mop. Of course, because yeah. then you don't want the dust in the... Yeah, I get you. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> but this is good, especially as an artist. You don't want to be making creative decisions when you're trying to execute the colors. Yeah, preliminary work is so important. Mm -hmm. Please plan out everything before you jump into final illustration, because once you get frustrated with the final, you jump into right away. Yeah. It just, it totally just destroy your confidence as artists. So, That's so true. You know, do a bunch of sketches. You know, you love the sketches, move on to color study. And mm -hmm. just like pick the color you want, really rough, mm -hmm. and jump into a final illustration. Then you will feel so much better about yourself and yeah. your ability will just increase as, a, as an artist. Yeah, it feels like you're just flo floating on air, floating yeah. on a dream if yeah, you do it that way. a lot way. of planning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and that, that doesn't say anything about you as an artist where like you can't just whip something out that's right. really cool. It's like, no, you're you're making it easier for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're putting in the time first so then you can just have fun later. Yeah. I do a lot of this like preliminary work because sometimes client could make a lot of adjustment. Oh yeah. So in order to provide your service, I think showing this preliminary preliminary work, it's very important to client to first um, to know where the image is going, what character, what race, what kind of color, what kind of mm -hmm. mood you're going into. But if you're doing a personal project, just have fun and I encourage you just experiment. Mm -hmm. Every, anything, any, anything, like different brushes, different right. color right away. Oh, cool. Power? I oh, know, you just have to do it. Here we go. Bye, Goodbye, GoPro. GoPro. See ya when you get back from summer camp. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I should have put on my head. That'd be cool. Oh. Go oh. pro it. Heck yeah, maybe tomorrow. Uh, in the chat, people are talking about their Halloween costumes. So chat, let us know what you're gonna be. I think we might do a little light costuming tomorrow. I wish I would. Perhaps, perhaps. I was a scarecrow over the weekend. Chat, what were you? Nora says, I was asked to wear a full black outfit for tomorrow. I don't understand why ghosts are normally white and transparent. That's Make a, a pink question. ghost in, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why the the color black. Maybe it's kind of like the Grim Reaper. Like you're supposed to be a scary, spooky spirit. Spooky, spooky. Who knows? I want to know what Voodoo Val is going to be for Halloween. Oh. She's the queen of cosplay and costumes. Let us see. Alberto says, it is lit here in Miami. Halloween is lit? I bet. Or the weather's lit. <laughs> or the weather is literally on right. fire. I don't want to talk about fires. Don't do it. Too soon. Too yeah. close. Too soon. <laughs> Light costuming, yes. Philippa, you don't know what you're gonna be for Halloween yet? Well, it's tomorrow. You could just use some eyeliner, draw on some whiskers. Be a cat. Do you have any plan for your costume, Kathleen? Well, yeah. I kinda wanna do something simple for tomorrow. I don't wanna distract from the live stream. Oh. <laughs> Not like this distraction that's happening right here. <laughs> Rock. Rock is some Wayne's World. I'll be Wayne. You can be Garth <gasps> the other way around. That'll be great. Mm -hmm. I'll be Wayne's World. I always want to do uh, Indiana Jones. I could Ooh. be the little Japanese boy. Mm. Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. There I don't go. touch anything. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know how I feel about that little guy. <laughs> he seems problematic to me. <laughs> I know. I would just like, you know, break things up. Yeah. <laughs> right, That'd just... be pretty good. I'll be the golden monkey or whatever, the oh, talisman. Yeah, that one. You can tell I don't really watch Indiana Jones. I don't know. <laughs> Alberto's like, what was that in the background? That was Sasquatch. You just saw him <laughs> live on camera. Uh, Wayne says I'm gonna be Sonic and, <laughs> I'm gonna be Sonic and Shrek's baby. <laughs> that sounds like a horror, horrific oh thing God. to be, <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> I love it. Actually, I really do want to be Sonic and Tails, like a couple's uh, costume. Yeah. Because Sonic and Tails are definitely in love. You That's can... my first video game I ever owned really? on Sega. <gasps> oh, God. Wow. Brings man. back childhood, man. Yeah, I used to play it on like a really old PC. Oh, okay. Like uh, in 97 or something. 
You know, me and my mom, we said, I fight, me and my brother, we fight for that Sega uh -huh. PlayStation console so bad. My mom said, you have to get, you know, like, test and the score, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you can get Sega. And my brother both get, like, straight A's that uh -huh. semester. My mom said, oh, okay, I'll get you. Well, get nice you job. Game. Yeah. Wow. So are you still a gamer? Oh, I am. <gasps> I am. You know what game I'm really expecting for next year? Animal the Crossing? Last of Us 2. Oh. It's coming out. That cool. game is stressful, but I is, love it. The is story. that by um, Naughty Dog? Yes. Oh my god, I'm so excited for that game. Man. I can't. I, mean, I have not played the first one, but I think I've like watched people play it. You should totally do it. It's stressful, but the character and the story, it's so amazing. I don't like being stressed, though. <laughs> no, like my work is stressed by that. Yeah, you're like, I get all... Tense. I know. <laughs> but it might be fun. It might be good for me. It's really, it's, it's a great game. Nice. So right. is that on PS4? PS4, yes. A fellow PlayStation fan. Okay, so I want to talk about this, this button. This is just so handy because nice. when you long, you just hold it. Mm -hmm. They'll literally create an eraser, same as your pixel brush. Yes. So you still have that texture there when you erase stuff. Love it. So I want to keep that texture on the edges. So everything will stylishly look coherent. Mm -hmm. right. Very smart. And it keeps your brush the same size too, right. which is important. Yeah. So that's as if you were in Photoshop and you changed your uh, brush mode to clear, that would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. I love that little touch assistant, that little smart button. I love that. And in the settings chat, if you have a uh, fresco, you can change what pressing that button does. So I think it can like, it can change to the eraser. It can, I forget what else, maybe activate the color picker. It's right here at this small question mark on mm -hmm. the top right here. Touch sor shortcut, yeah. there we Touch go. Touch shortcut, there we go. Touch shortcut. And so um, so when when I use this like texture brush, ink brush, when I fill it, they're like little, you know, mm -hmm. the line here. You just go back in, redraw it, just fill in the colors. Boom. Yeah. It really is just like a coloring book. It is. It's so nice. <laughs> People are going to be um, Thanos for Halloween, perhaps. Oh. Guy Fieri. Oh. Interesting choices, everybody. Interesting Kerwin's choices. Thick Thanos. <laughs> thick Thanos. Thick TM, Thanos. TM, TM, TM. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Nora says, just thinking of the Shrek movies makes me laugh. The donkey and the cat are so good. <laughs> You're so <laughs> pure. So pure, Nor. Mm. Puss in Boots. What a good character. Um, Kerwin says, best costumes at the LA Comic Con this year was Thick Thanos, I bet. I bet people went real weird with it. What's up, Shauna Lynn Parmesan? Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Chat, if you don't know Shauna, amazing lettering artist and fellow Ohioan now, which is amazing. So cool, Shauna, how you doing? Kevin says, Fresco's tools are so intuitive. They are. Yeah. I love this app so much. Yay, I'm so glad. Do you have a, a secret wish for Fresco? Like if it could do anything, what would you want it to do? Um, I think it's like a long hold to Ooh. create. I don't know if they have it though. Let me try it. Just like create a straight line and just hold it. Oh. You know, or just like some button there, I can just like draw a straight line without worry. But now I just turn on the smoothing onto the very, mm -hmm. sometimes you increase the numbers. Right. It give you a smoother edges. Which works too. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that might be coming in the future. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wonk, wink, 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 wink. Keep an eye out. Keep yeah. updating your apps. <laughs> oh, Alberto, that's a really great idea. Wear a white t shirt that says 404 error costume not found. <laughs> love it. I love it a lot. Kara, hello. Good to see you. Also, another amazing illustrator and designer who's going to be at Max. Very, very cool. Need to dive into Fresco ASAP. I agree. Please do. Draw with us. Draw with us. Paint with us. So, do you have any plans for the rest of the year for like events? Any creative events you're gonna go to? I'm going to American Illustration. There's a party for their annual uh, competition. Oh, cool. Um, I'll be there. I think it's November eighth. I need to check my email again. <laughs> yeah. So you it's need... today. It's today. Damn. <laughs> but yeah, I need to get tickets and. Get my flight tickets. I totally forgot to buy that. Cool. I need to get out soon. Maybe Man. today. Where is it? New York? In New York, yeah. How did I know? Yeah. <laughs> it's in New York. I'm sad I didn't find out Adobe Max this year's in LA. I would have go. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I think it's in LA 
often. You should go next year. Okay. For sure. I'm totally gonna do. Yeah, that's actually a great segue chat. Adobe Live is gonna be streaming from the conference floor at Adobe Max next week. It's amazing. So we're gonna be streaming Monday through Wednesday, all day, every day. And if you don't know what Max is, it's a huge creativity conference. I think there's gonna be over 15,000 people there. Jeez. Yeah, every year they're like, it's the biggest Max ever because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, It's super cool, but it's where uh, a lot of uh, app and product announcements are made. So it's a good place to learn about what's coming for the new year uh, for Adobe. There's gonna be lots of cool announcements. And then the cool part about Adobe Live being there is right after those announcements are made, uh, we're gonna be demoing a lot of the new products and kind of getting the hot takes from some of the designers who are there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of Adobe people and product teams talking about the new products and launches and those kind of things. Yeah, the Adobe Live from the floor is going to be lit. Howard, are you going to be there? Will we see you? Very, very cool. And if you're going to be at Max, first of all, let us know in the chat right now. And second of all, come over to the booth and meet us and get some stickers. I think stickers. there's going to be a good sticker game going on. Oh my god, I love stickers. Yes, me too. I have too many, but right? I love it. I always put it on the computer, and it, and in a year I regret it. I just tried to like, take it out. Yeah. I ruined that sticker. No. Oh no! Yeah, they are very ephemeral, like not a permanent thing. Yeah. I have my Kappa collection. Can somebody just in, invent a reusable sticker, please? Right. Is that a magnet? <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my computer. A magnet. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. It's like that meme of that guy holding the butterfly. He's like, is this? A butterfly? What is it? Is this a magnet? <laughs> Amazing. Oh, cool, Howard, you're gonna be at Max. Great. Yeah. See you there. Amazing. Oh, Lisa's gonna be there. Lisa, come say hello to us. It's gonna be so fun. Jordan says, I wish I could go, but too poor. Yeah, the tickets are not cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for at least in the past couple years, we've had some discounts through Adobe Live. So keep an eye out if you're really interested in going. We might have something like that, some early bird specials. Ooh, Lindsay says a cling. Yeah, instead of a sticker, it's more of like a static cling that will stick to oh, things. Oh, right. That could work. Yeah. Mm -mm. Wayne says, I want your Kappa sticker. They're mine. No, my Kappa you can take it. Man. Get your own Kappa. So the way I got these Kappa stickers is a lot of my coworkers have gone to Japan in the last year and every time one has brought me back a Kappa sticker. And a Kappa is like a turtle with a bowl of water on its head. He's like a... What? <laughs> yes, yeah, so he's like a mythical creature from Japan and he has a bowl of water in his head and you have to give him a cucumber so that he'll bow and spill the water out of his head and that's how you like defeat him. Oh my god. Ooh, a zoom in. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, by the way, I designed this. Self self promo. And Ren made this one. Do you know what does he say? The Japanese character? Um, it says, He, a guy, guy, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Can someone else read it for me? I knew Katakana one time. <laughs> Dude, that character is just too cute. I know, super cute. But anyways, every time my coworkers have come back and they've given me a sticker, and then I went to Japan a couple months ago and I couldn't find any Kappa stickers. No. So sad. You're like, we need more cute mythical creature here. I please. agree. Please, 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 cover. Cover my laptop. Ooh, Agnes says I just got my stickers. They are awesome, very cool. Did you get them from Sticker Mule? Awesome. What's up, Eric Sue? Good to see ya. How you doing? Oh, Ren, hello. Ren. Our good friend, Ren. Yes, Ren designed the pizza rat. Oh, yeah. For New York, the New York mascot. Very cool. Yeah, in the green screen, my green cap is like holographic. Because it's showing Alex beautiful work. Yay, we're, in the wa we're, we're under the ocean right now. Floating, floating, floating. Nobody paid attention to the fact that we couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we actually can't because we survived, right? Yeah, true. We true, have true, true. secret power. Okay, so we're working on her beautiful hair, mm -hmm. or her skin, or her shirt, her actually. Shirt. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Um, do you have the smoothing turned on at all? Yes, now cool. the smoothing is on 36 because I want this arm to be a little straighter. Because, you know, hair is just more dynamic, so you can have, you can just like, do a texture, whatever, you know, like a little wavier than you expected. So. Right. But for arm, I wanted, I wanted it to be more precise. Yeah. 
And I think that's something that I notice about your work is mm -hmm. that it, it's clearly made with raster brushes because it has this beautiful texture and a live quality, but your shapes are very smooth. So I'm guessing that you utilize like selections and smoothing in your brushes. Yes. To make your shape so smooth. Yes, smoothing is my big, big friend. Mm-hmm. Best friend. Best friend. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing. Like I feel like some people are like, well, you would only use that if like you're not sure of your lines. But sure, but you know that's that's a that's a good thing about digital. You know, you mm -hmm. want to create your own style, and which I my OCD personality want me to create this perfect. You know, like arc, arc line, a straight line, mm -hmm. and like more work I create in this style, it turns into my thing. Yeah. So people will see as oh, when I see this picture, is it belongs to. Yeah. Someone, someone, someone. It's not a bad thing, right? <laughs> you, you, you. Yeah. Very true. Try to stand out. I would like to use smoothing in my shapes a little bit more. Yeah. Because mine can, mine can get a little bit wily and out of control. Which is great, too. It's more expressive, right? That's true. Yeah. So maybe somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Uh, Kevin says, the stickers look amazing. Where'd you get them printed? So the one that Ren and I made are from Sticker Mule. So it's an amazing way to get uh, stickers printed for pretty cheap at great quality. Um, so I highly recommend that for sure. Sam says, I still need to try the vector brushes in fresco. Yes, you do. Sam, I'd like to see your work in vector because yeah. you're such a digital painter. Share with us. Very cool. Have you used the vector brushes at all? To be honest, I haven't yet because I haven't touched my uh, Illustrator for very long. Mm -hmm. I always just use um, Photoshop or Reason Fresco to draw. Right. So, yeah, uh, I like those quality, you know, like you just use your arm and you can control instead mm -hmm. of like dragging the pen tool. Like oh. Everybody's different, but right. I prefer working this way. Yeah, it doesn't feel so much like you're drawing when you're just dropping points and pulling handles. Right, it's a very different approach on creating art. Yeah, right, but some people make really beautiful Which vector great, art. Too, yeah. yeah, Brian Yap, Lydia Lukianova, uh, Rob Zilla, of course. Rob Zilla. Mm -hmm. Shauna says, I taught a workshop on fresco uh, this past Saturday, and a few people were using the vector brushes and seemed to really like them. Ooh. Awesome. Shauna, did their work look vector, or did they kind of use it in a way that looked a little bit more organic? Mm. I'm interested. Welcome back, Paul. Good to see you. Oh, Agnes, your stickers were made with uh, fresco, and you used the Adobe Live sticker mule discount. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> uh, Paul says, can you import vector brushes? I'm not sure. I've never tried. I know you can import the pixel brushes for sure. Huh. Because for pixel brushes, you have a plus sign. Mm -hmm. You can definitely do that. Vector, I haven't seen that. Oh, wait, the one below it. That's live brushes. Oh, sorry. Let's try that. There we go. So not oh, yet, it not seems. Yet. Mm -hmm. But that's a great uh, feature request, and you can definitely send those to the team within the app. Mm -hmm. The really cool thing about Fresco is it is still like a living, breathing production. Like the updates are uh, taking into account what the community wants, product-wise and um, function-wise. So if that's something you want, you should definitely ask for it. Make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Shauna says the vector work did look vectorized, but some use them in a very sketchy way. That's interesting. Uh, but people liked how you could fill in the outlines of a vector drawing easily with no artifacting. Mm. Nice. Love nice. it. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I don't want the color wheel. Get out of there. I know, since I already picked my color, so that is done. Cool. I love how in your recent, oh, swatches, it shows you your color palette. All right, chat, it is time for the chat and win. Woo! Woo! Very exciting. All right. So we're going to be giving away a $30 gift certificate to moo.com. It's an awesome way to get anything printed that you might need, need tote bags, uh, stickers, even those kind of things. So we're going to ask you a question, and when you answer in chat, you'll be entered to win. So is there anything that you want to know about the chat members, like favorite color, favorite Adobe product. I want to know what's your favorite function on Adobe Fresco? Yes, let us know and yeah. we'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, so let us know what's your favorite thing about Fresco, or if you haven't used it, um, let us know your favorite thing about drawing in general. Yeah. <laughs> Paul says, I love Illustrator. Cool, Paul, me too. <laughs> try Fresco, you will love it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like baby Illustrator. Yeah. Kevin says, the brushes. Jordan says, I haven't played with Fresco yet since I don't have an iPad. Oh no, oh. darn, it's really nice if you ever do get your hands on it. Uh, Kevin says, I love the brushes and how good they are. A lot of people haven't tried it yet. You gotta try it. It's free. Yeah, it definitely is free. Yeah. You can uh, go maybe try it at like an Apple store if a friend has an iPad. You could check that out. Robert says, I wanna check it out soon. Lindsay says, I like that you can blend paint strokes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yay, we have our winner. So Tom LaRock, you have just won a $30 gift certificate to Moo. Dot com. Tom, are you here? Let's see you in the chat. Oh, I see you. Oh, there we go. Tom likes the app's name. Mm. Very nice. So Tom, you're gonna get a $30 gift certificate. You can get whatever you wanted print, ever, <laughs> whoa, whatever you want printed. <laughs> Too much. Uh, but chat, if you did not win, please do not fret. We also have uh, a nice little discount link for you. If you go to moo.com slash Adobe Live, you can get 15% off of your next order. So there you go, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Cool. All right. Back to the action. To the drawing board. Mm -hmm. Robert wants to know, is there ever gonna be a release of Fresco as a desktop app? Mm. I don't believe so. Uh, just because that tools that are within Fresco are really f from larger desktop apps. So like if you want to do digital painting on the desktop, you can use Photoshop you can get the same effects. Um, you can even open these Fresco files in Photoshop, or if you wanna do more vectory stuff, you can open uh, Illustrator and do it in there. Yeah, so this is really for the artist on the go who wants to create wherever they feel creative. One thing I really love Fresco is that I just, you go on a long flight, you mm -hmm. don't need Wi-Fi, you just take your iPad with some battery juice and mm -hmm. start drawing and painting. It's, yeah. it's great, it kills time so quick. Yeah, and you don't have to like have your whole pencil pouch and all your paints with you. Right. It's amazing. Especially the watercolors. Like you would need a glass of water and all your brushes and all these paints. It's like, no. And we have watercolor brushes here to mm -hmm. light brush. It's great. They're really nice. And if you mess up, you can just undo it. Oh yeah. Which you cannot do <laughs> with real watercolor. No. No, no, no. Uh, no problem, Tom. He says, we're all winners here at Adobe Live. That's true. But you actually won today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy that gift card. So chat, in about an hour, you can see the uh, little feedback countdown below us. We're gonna be giving you feedback for the Daily Creative Challenge today. So Jesus uh, hosted the stream right before this about how to add water effects and rain effects in Photoshop. And if you wanna participate, you can work on your challenge. And then if you wanna get feedback, make sure you get it uploaded onto Discord in the next 55 minutes. Let me check Discord, see if we have any submissions so far. Oh, we have one, one from Ahmed. Ooh. Very, very cool. Excited to see more. Give us more. More. <laughs> uh, Paul says, do vector brushes export into AI as paths or shapes? So the vector brushes in AI or in Fresco are like the blob brush in Illustrator. So it's a shape that helps you. Hopefully it does. Eric says it has been snowing here in Utah. Oh man. Oh man. Sorry, Eric. Stay warm. Stay warm for show. I love snow though. Yeah, mm. you've experienced it. Yeah, I used to live in Wyoming and snow is a, is a great thing at the same time, but it's kind of a pain. The mm -hmm. dur, dur, dur. Yeah. But I do appreciate how beautiful they are. Right. If you're inside and you're warm, you're looking out at the snow. The way you need to go to school, go to work, <laughs> nah. <laughs> you're like, sorry, my car is snowed in, cannot come. <laughs> Man, yeah, I feel the same way. But I really don't ever want to live in a place where I have to dig my car out of snow uh, again in my life because it was pretty terrible. It is kind of scarred. I hope I'm not making people dizzy because I keep rotating my Whoa. canvas. 
But I think like how my hands work, you know, mm -hmm. up and down and left to right. Yeah. It pulls the perfect line I want and the edges. Right. So yeah. you're pulling yeah. your lines. Yeah. That's a great way to get a, a more straight and controlled line mm -hmm. instead of pushing it. Right. And you're a righty, so that makes it easy. I am a righty. Nice. Wayne says, Wyoming, I used to work in Jackson Hole. Oh. Oh my god, I love that place. Mm -hmm. Beautiful result uh, resort. Right. Yeah. Some good fly fishing. Yes. <laughs> That's cool, Wayne. What did you do there? Were you a fly fishing instructor? Were you a nature guide? Let us know. Eric says, I've been to Wyoming too. Awesome. Wyoming's well, I mean, beautiful. Yeah, I think I've only driven through when we were moving across the country. But it was a nice place. Oops. Look at those legs. Long, long, beautiful legs. Leg all day. Whoa, who's streaming it from Africa? Whoa. What? <laughs> Hi. Hello, hello. Amazing country over there, says Richard, about Wyoming. Definitely. Oh, okay, so Wayne was the art director of a Jackson Hole magazine. Wow. Or the Jackson Hole magazine. Don't forget the. The, the it is the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very awesome. So I'm interested to know if you've ever uh, had any other creative jobs before you were a freelancer. Actually, right after I graduated art school, um, I work as a design intern hmm. in San Francisco tech company. Um, I wasn't really designing anything because I, it's, it's more of a learning curve mm -hmm. because also you, we, we don't have an ability to go out and just do freelance because we need to pay rent to pay bills. Especially here, yes. Right. <laughs> so I... I wanted to get an experience just to have a plan B if the freelance is not working as mm -hmm. fast as, as I want. So I decided maybe graphic design is a good starting point to mm -hmm. learn the second skills, you know. Right. Once we have anything happen in the society, we can still get a job. Right. You know. Yep. So I've been working for um, part-time, full-time, on and off for three years. And this year I started full-time full freelance. Wow. So don't get discouraged because it's a long game. Mm -hmm. You just need to be persistent and never get discouraged and just keep drawing and painting and put things out. Yeah. And keep updating your portfolio and the personal work is so important for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's important to keep working. Yeah. Stay never. relevant. You will feel stressed out, you'll feel discouraged. Take a walk, take a vacation, talk to somebody, talk to a friend, just share. Mm -hmm what you've been through, but never forget your passion about being an illustrator, being an artist. Mm. Just make it work, mm -hmm. right? I feel so inspired right now. <laughs> I need to pull out my iPad and start drawing too. I remember one of my teachers before I graduated, I asked her, before I, I moved to New York for a little while, just have my artist dream. I need to go to Big Apple. The one and only. <laughs> yeah, and, she, and, and I asked her, how should I make it? She just like, never stop drawing. Mm -hmm. People will give you a lot of uh, critique that hurt your feeling, but you know what? Just keep drawing, it's what you like. And if you can make a living making, you can make the rent, take a restaurant job, take mm -hmm. a coffee shop job, yeah. never stop. Right. Do not stop. That's something that I think is important for people to hear, that having a second job or mm -hmm. even a, a nine to five job is not a bad thing. Thing. It's normal. It's Trust super me, normal. It's very normal. And it's your life. Like, yeah. you gotta do what works for you, you right. know? It'll be okay. You can just make it work for you and follow your dreams. Yes. Yeah. So, anyone in chat, are you on your way to becoming a freelancer? Have you been a freelancer before and now you're uh, doing a different thing? Let mm -hmm. us know what your, your life's all about. D says that is very helpful. Yeah, share with us. Yeah, let us know. I've actually never been like totally freelance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I'm interested in in the future, maybe. But it's very scary at first. Mm -hmm. When I quit my the previous job, mm -hmm. I was freaking out. Right. <laughs> What's going on? Right. What Especially am I gonna do next month? In a place like this, where your livelihood is really important. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a place like the Midwest where. A little easier to get by. Month but it's to month. also that leap of faith to push you to work uh -huh. harder. Yeah. So the stakes are high. Yeah. Right. Eric yeah. says I have a nine to five job. Yeah, Eric, same. It's, it's great. And it's good. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Uh, Kerwin says that I am full time and freelance on rare occasions. Nice. Just gotta make it work for you. Checha says that I love the brush that Alec is using. Okay. 
It's under ink. You put it all <laughs> under ink, and it's called natural anchor. Very nice. It has that beautiful kind of bristly texture on the yeah, edge. Yeah, I love that texture. Oh yeah, Kara, that's a really good point. Sometimes working a non-creative job helps us uh, be more creative outside of work. That is so true. Mm -hmm. When I was graphic designing, when I got home, I don't want to draw because I literally just design people's stuff. Yeah, you yeah. used all of your creative energy on stuff that you weren't super that passionate about. That's for everyone. Yeah. Wayne says, I'm late into illustration, so I have a full-time career and illustrate for fun at the moment. Never too late. No, no, and Wayne is super prolific. He's always posting new illustrations. I'm like, I need to get on Wayne's level. That's the key, man. Dang. Philippa says, I am just a hobbyist. That's all right. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, Hay says, I started full-time freelancing as an illustrator this month after three years of agency work. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. Amazing job. How cool. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you. For everyone who is coming in right now, I feel like we're having a couple new viewers welcome. Hi, this is viewer. Alec painting an Adobe Fresco. Very cool, doing some editorial illustration. Oh, that's nice. Paul says, I'm a full-time designer, a full-time dad, and freelancer when I'm supposed to sleep. I love coffee. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Paul is making it work. Yeah, he's cranked that live on, which mm -hmm. is great, great, great. Gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> Rothel says, this is very cool. I agree. When you design your character, I just want to say, like, make it interesting. You know, like, I think character is always, you know, Human, we have this connection with like our gesture mm -hmm. and how we our eye contact, where your character is looking. You know, I designed this 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 girl is looking at us to engage audience. Yeah. And these two look away but have more more of a dramatic pose. Yeah. You just try to you, you try to like drag people into your your art and just mm -hmm. like make it more interesting. Wow. Then so some people approaching differently. They have more flat of the characteristic on character, mm -hmm. but they use really strong color, which works too. But for me, I sometimes I'm not really comfortable with my color, so I, I design a character a little bit more. Mm. Then use a simpler color palette. Gotcha. To drag people's attention. Wow. Yeah. So you really can focus on different areas to kind of. Uh, help you mm -hmm. detract from areas you're not as comfortable in. Like, this is what makes your style your style. Yeah. It's you. You know your strength, you know your weakness, mm -hmm. and applying to your art, and it yeah. will become your style. Definitely. Uh, Val wants to know who inspires you. Who inspires me? From school, I'll say the illustrator called Barry Blood. Mm -mm. He is a watercolorist and editorial. I've been working for I forgot New Yorker or New York Time Magazine for many, many years. And he also went on a podcast with, uh, with Debbie Millman. I strongly um, advise everybody to listen to it because he is so inspirational. Wow. Yeah. Cool, I love the, the gesture painting that he has. It's very political, but yeah. it has a really humorous touch in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, lots of caricatures. Yeah. Cool, so that's Barry Blitt, B-L-I-T-T. -T. That's how you spell the last name. <laughs> yeah, Paul, coffee is your best friend. Cool, anyone else that inspires you, Ma even non-artists? Non-artists. Or anything in life, like does nature inspire you? Recently, it's Jane Fonda. Mm. She's being arrested the third time for protecting yeah. our environment. Oh, Go God. Jane. Go Jane. She's We're amazing. with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw that. That's amazing. We There's like a you. big group of celebrities, I mm -hmm. think, that just keep getting arrested. Yeah. Use your voice. Use mm -hmm. your, you know, people, celebrity, use their fame. You use your art. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because a lot of artists grow up creative and they're like, this is just a thing that I do. It's just kind right. of part of me. But you really can leverage it as like a very specific set of skills that only you have. Like most people don't have these kind of skills to make this kind of visual. I think what I want is like, what, what I really really actually want me to do this is I want to say something and I don't want to be afraid of say something. I don't want things society to actually limit us. Mm -hmm. You know, like my art could be sometimes controversial. People yeah. will say, this is too controversial, not going to sell, but I still <laughs> want to do it because yeah. it's your ability as an artist to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't censor yourself. Mm -hmm, yeah. And people can tell like when you pull back things from your art and you try and mold it too much to society. Totally. Like, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't Very feel authentic. Serious. Yeah. People can see. Yep. 
<laughs> Kerwin says, I'm very fond of her environmental advocacy. Huh. Nice. Huh. Yeah. Love it. Karen says, you're the best. Oh. That's so sweet. <laughs> Checha says, hugs from Columbia. Hello. Hello. Thanks for watching. What time is it there? Let's see. Afternoon? Morning? I'm not sure. <laughs> Let us know. So Alec was telling me earlier that the freelance life doesn't require you to wake up that early. So today was like the earliest that he's woken up in a long time. I feel so guilty to bring this information, <laughs> but I, what That's I want right. to say is um, you set your own schedule. Mm -hmm. So I, I woke up a little late at like around 8 or 7.30, but I, I work until like 7 or 8, mm -hmm. or sometimes I, wouldn't, I want to work a little like at night. Yeah. I sort of just, I want to take, a, take my dog to a walk, mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of the day, just I like, take a long lunch. So I, a freelance is great that I have your own flexibility to yeah. set your own schedule. Right. But you also need to discipline, discipline yourself to get back that drawing board to keep working. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I struggle with. And that's kind of why I like to have like set hours. I have to be at work. Right. It's like I have to be there. I have to work then. So what are your most, uh, your best hours for working? Are you a morning person, evening person? I say right after dinner. Hmm. Until midnight. That's my best what? hour to work. Interesting. Or very early in the morning, I wake up at 7.30, make my coffee, mm -hmm. send a few emails, and just start drawing. Once I see the lights, the, the sun is in the middle of the night, and mm -hmm. the afternoon is so sunny, I just want to go out. Yeah. I just want to go out. Gotta soak up all that sun. Yeah. Totally. Then I'll still count my hours. Eight hours, <laughs> man. Keep that eight hours going. You gotta do it. Yeah. Man, <laughs> Leroy says, freelance freedom! Yes! <laughs> Oh, Checha, it's midday in Colombia. Gotcha. Hey. Uh, Chella says, how do you undo without touching the arrow? Is it the pen? He's trying, sh they're trying to figure out how to do that. So Two finger. Yep. Undo. Two undo. finger tap. Undo. Yeah. Three finger, redo, redo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so uh, if you want to check out the different shortcuts, I think there's even a little helper. Right here. In fresco. Yeah. Boom. Let's take true. a tour, view gestures. Right. That should help you. Alberto says the first four hours in the morning are most productive for me. me too. Same here. Yep. Yeah. I think the hours of like <laughs> it's it's kind of bad, but there's like a three hour golden gap for me. That's like that's when I can really work, and then the hours all on the other side are kind of like trickling on and off. So like 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's like when I'm most productive. Same here but you still have to work a little bit more than that. I know. <laughs> Stinks. No problem, Chella. <laughs> nice. Okay, Kerwin wants to know, how do you how did you end up in editorial illustration? Was it something you searched for or did you fall into it? I did not know there's a category as uh, uh, editorial illustration until I go to school. And mm -hmm. teacher would be like, you can be a concept artist to work for animation in the movie. You can work for a children's book. Mm -hmm. Um, you can work for more licensing, like you go on to you know, convention, sell your products. And I was just like looking into this editorial, so I take editorial classes and the teacher, and, and I explored this terrain and mm -hmm. never actually entered. Right. And I said, like, whoa, this is really cool. You can do conceptual, you can do political, and yeah. you can make really controversial stuff. And just ex explore anything, you know? You mm -hmm. like to draw cute stuff, maybe children's book is your area to mm -hmm. go to, which mm -hmm. is not mine. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so editorial just, at art school, just that time to really mm -hmm. drag me into do editorial illustration. Yeah. 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 Similar interest for me. Like, you can get really weird and metaphorical mm -hmm. with your illustrations, which is what I like. Like, yeah. symbolism and throwing things in there that mean other things. It's very nice. It really depends on the artist. Mm -hmm. When you do what you like, people see it and you attract them. Yep. They can tell that you love what you do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ryan says, I would love the option to undo with the double tap on the Apple Pencil. Oh, I let's try. I thought you could. I need to. Or like that on the side of the pencil, oh. you know? I think this is the function for Apple. Oh. Mm -hmm. They actually opened up the last action you open. Oh, interesting. So the last action that was eye dropping for mm -hmm. the color, so it actually select color. Gotcha. Right. Uh, Wayne wants to know what uh, 
tool do you use for your portfolio? Do you use Squarespace? I use Squarespace. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful templates. I use Squarespace. Mm-hmm. And Good Behance, one. for sure. Of course. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Behance is awesome. And then if you have a CC subscription, you can use Adobe Portfolio. Mm -hmm. That's a great app. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't got a chance to use it yet, but mm -hmm. a lot of my friend is using it. Yeah, maybe I can pull up mine. Mine isn't live right now because I'm updating it, but let's see if I can open mine. Let's see. Is that it? <laughs> nope. Never mind. I actually just bought my domain name yesterday. Ooh. I know. Making big moves. Brand yourself. I'm trying yeah. to. Trying to. Brand it. Kara says, I love editorial work and sometimes the quick turnaround uh, pushes me to make decisions. Enjoying watching your process. Thanks. Yes, editorial can be very, very fast. Sometimes they. I want to find out in five days. You're like, ah. Yeah. But when you really work into it, but editorial mostly is a smaller size. Mm -hmm. Not like children's book, you know, it took them months to finish the whole, right. whole book. Right. So editorial could be easier, but they don't pay it. Depends on the company. I won't yeah. say that. So right. I'm going to say that. Yeah. But it can be like a quicker turnaround for right. a lower amount, but right. you can do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Val. Appreciate it. Um, Checha says, that's the new Apple Pencil. Yeah. That is the most updated one. This one. Yeah, the second generation. It's got that soft matte feel. Mm -hmm. It's so light too. Very light. Right, What's down. up, Tima? Good to see ya. We've got about 35 minutes until we're gonna be doing reviews for the Daily Creative Challenge. Mm -hmm. So if you watched Jesus's stream before, he was showing how to make a water effect in Photoshop. And if you've been working on the challenge while watching the stream, and you're not totally done yet, don't worry. You can post your work in progress on Discord and we will give you some feedback. And if you want to join Discord, it is bit.ly slash PS Discord. Capital P, capital S. Boom, boom. Any more questions for Alec? These are some really good ones coming through. Talking art, talking career. Yeah. Did you always know you wanted to be an artist? I don't always, I, I actually don't. I just like to draw all the okay. time. Then in high school, I was just deciding college. I actually was going and I wanted to go into poli-sci. But I was so, I loved the art and the music so much. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what can I do to make the most? I enjoy and also make money. <laughs> then I said, let's do art school. <laughs> my mom said, I don't like that answer. Yeah. I like police eye better. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Maybe a little safer. Wow. So I guess editorial really makes sense for you. If yes. you really want to like make a statement and talk right. about what you believe in. Yeah. That's one of my friends says, and maybe that's why you go into editorial because mm -hmm. you always just get mad, get emotional. Yeah. What's going on around? You're passionate. The surroundings. Yeah. So you said music. Do you play any instruments? I used to play saxophone in high school and middle school for wow. eight years. Wow. Yeah. I was He's a band geek. Band geek. Were you ever Proud in uh, marching, marching band? Yes. Cool. And you know, marching band in Wyoming is not fun in winter. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Goodness, I can't even imagine. I've heard a lot of people that were in marching band in like Florida, in places that are really hot. That's mm -hmm. really hard too. So. If it's hot or it's cold, it's not good. I remember one time when doing marching band in this like big high school stuff, and it was a stormy and it was it was snowing. My finger locked up, <gasps> and I was literally just walk the steps. Mm -hmm. I can't like, play. I can't do this. I can't. Answer. I'm from Taiwan originally. This yeah. is too much. It's too hot yeah. or cold. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is too cold and too hard for oh sure. Oh my gosh, your fingers are like stuck to your saxophone. <laughs> and my director that I look at us is like, "Are you playing?" Is that Yes, I'm playing. Totally. Totally. Doing my best. <laughs> uh, Checha says everything it takes. Oh, so you want to buy the pencil, Checha? Or it's sold out? I'm confused. Oh. Uh, Timo wants to know how do you get editorial work? Do you cold call directors or do they contact you? Uh, you have an 
agency, right? Yes, I actually, I think the, the quickest way after you graduate school, you want to get like really quick job is through agent. Mm -hmm. But when, when you apply agent, you need to have really extensive portfolio, which mm -hmm. is your personal work. I encourage everybody to invest time on portfolio because it's so important in your career. And look for agent. Um, cold calling, from my experience, in my opinion, it doesn't really work for me because sometimes directors are super busy yeah. and you don't get their information that easily. And sometimes you get into the wrong person and you're just annoying them. Yeah. Yeah. I would prefer email if you want to call, contact people. Mm -hmm. Email should be the best, but it's still really hard to get people response. Yeah. So I think the quickest way is get out to community, go to shows, mm -hmm. attend illustration shows, know people, get to know this director and art director in person. Yeah. That's the quickest way. Right. And for me, it's, I'm not very um, outgoing that much, so I get an agent, so she present me to get clients, mm -hmm. to get work. Yeah. Yeah. It, different things work for different people. Yeah. Um, and then team is also wondering, what platforms do you use for exposure besides Behance? Do you use other social media? Instagram mainly. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. I started using Twitter, but I still don't really know how, to, how it works. Yeah. But I just post as much as possible on mm -hmm. Instagram and story. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest piece of advice here is make sure that you have a lot of work. And if you don't, that you're making a lot of work. Absolutely. Um, and then sharing it and posting it. But I have noticed on Twitter especially, there's a pretty vivacious community of designers and artists and they're always posting like hey i'm looking for this kind of illustrator like if you have a portfolio like send it to me um so there's really nothing to lose when you're I doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. thank you for sharing yeah get on there especially a lot of like concept artists and people working in like the movie industry or tv right they're always looking for storyboard artists and concept artists that kind of thing the really main thing is get your portfolio up to date, yeah. you know. That's the hardest part. Like that's the brunt of the work. Yeah. Is actually doing the work, but yeah. there's no cheating. That's what you have to do. Because social media is a platform to let people see you, mm -hmm. but you will need to cons consistently show up to say, "I'm still doing new work." Yeah. Oh, that's hitting me to the core. I know. Too real. <laughs> need to make some stuff. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Kathleen. Relax. <laughs> but that's a process, part, of, part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you enjoy it and yeah. you feel pain about it, but... Yeah, you go through ups and downs. You go through ups and downs. Definitely. Uh, Ryan says, I read so many reviews about the Apple Pencil being easy to lose. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's really light, like, and it's white. Light. It kind of just disappears into things. And also it just like um, sucked on... T sucked <laughs> <laughs> magnetically yeah. on iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easy to lose. Right. I'm always worried about that. Like if I were to put it in my bag, that it will just pop off right. somewhere. Well, I got a case with an actual holder mm -hmm. into it, so it's always secure there. Nice. Yeah. And you said you really like your case. I do. Do you have an, is there a name for it that you can recommend? I don't, but okay. I actually have it next to me. Yeah, maybe we can show it All on right. the camera. I, this is it. This one. Yeah, so it's got like the nice So it has gray. a little pencil holder, so you never actually lose it. Oh, cool, you just like stick it in there. Yeah, and you charge it at the same time. Ooh. So. Boom. Amazon, man. Thanks, Amazon. Uh, let's see, MD says, I worked as a full-time design freelancer, mm -hmm. and now I'm full-time remote. Just bought an iPad, excited to try Fresco. Yes. Woohoo. That's awesome. Chat, totally, you gotta try out Fresco. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not an illustrator, it's just oh, like yeah. fun to play in. You know, I saw people do like wireframe stuff, mm -hmm. the simple sketches. Some people like do design, you know. Yeah. Just put on layouts. You can even uh, import images and make like layer masks. So mm -hmm. if you want to do any collage work with like painting, right. that works too. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne says that that Apple Pencil needs like a tracker, like a beeping tracker. That since it's $100. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh no, Kim dropped her Apple Pencil in the living room and didn't realize it until her dog ate it. Oh god. Your dog's like, found it for you. Delicious it. snack. And I had fun with it. Oof. That's sad. Very sad. Oh nice, Voodoo Val. She's like built this habit of making sure she puts her Apple Pencil back where it belongs when mm -hmm. she's done using it. Yeah. That's how I am with my like tablet pen. Just like, it goes back in the holder. Yes. No matter what. All the time. Because <laughs> that thing, 
I don't want to spend $70 to get a new one. No, no. No, thank you. Here it is. We don't have that extra no. cash to spend. Not quite. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Chad, let us know if you have any more questions about freelancing or art school. So you said you got out of school three years ago? Three years ago, yes. Okay, Yeah. cool. So still relatively fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> if you have any questions. Thanks, Adobe, for letting me do in this. Of course. Heck yeah. It's yeah. awesome. We're always looking for great illustrators and designers, especially in San Francisco. Humble, humble, humble. <laughs> oh no. Wayne's uh, pencil got chewed on too oh, by his no. dog. Dang it. I think my dog would die of guilt if he ever did anything like that. <laughs> so he will literally just show you the guilt? Yeah, That's he would like cute. roll over and be like, I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> He's too sweet for this world. I know. That's why you don't have a cat because cats don't feel guilty. No, he'd be like, poof, off the table. I deserve it. I hate you. <laughs> your pencil's mine. Mm-hmm. He's like, your pencil? My pencil. He's like, what? <laughs> uh, Checho wants to know, how can I make a mask in fresco? I actually, I haven't really tried masking Ooh, yet. Ooh, it's super duper easy. So whatever mm-hmm. layer that you're on. Yeah. So this one, if you swipe, I think it's to the left on that actual okay, layer, so or maybe to the right. Well, let's try click it. Mm, we we can do create empty mask mm-hmm. or mask layer context. Let me try. Hmm? Okay, maybe it's not working. Okay. But uh, yeah, you can just select the layer and then create an empty mask. Oh. Do it from there. Very helpful. I'm gonna try that in my spare time. Mm-hmm. Are you much of a masker? Do you use no, masks? No, not at all. So you Makes can see that all my layers is all like the shape I draw. Mm-hmm. So you don't really need to. Yeah. With your process. Yeah. Yeah. Which pre- prevent me from learning? <laughs> I should know it. I should Maybe. It. But if it works for you, that's the hard thing about freelancing and doing work is that like if you find what works for you, you have to work quickly. Right. So there's not a lot of time to just play and explore. But it's always good to learn. Right. A little something. In your spare time, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. that's why Adobe Live is so awesome. You can watch other pros with their different workflows. And I you literally can just opened a streaming yesterday to listen to four hours of people like, you know, like teaching skills mm-hmm. and, you know, and just do work. It's it's great. It's awesome. Was it a Photoshop stream or was it like XD or something? Uh, actually Fresco, because I mm. this is relatively new app. I still am learning as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. There's always new stuff you can ex- explore. And Very people, nice approach different things differently. Was it an old stream? It's actually a recent one. Uh, Doc Reed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doc Reed. Doc Reed. Ah, the nicest guy. Yes. Very, Love very his cool. work. Mm-hmm. And chat, if you didn't know, you can always go back and watch the replays of mm-hmm. previous streams. So if you're watching Adobe Live right now, if you just scroll down, we have the schedule of upcoming streams. But also below that, we have the different kind of categories. So we have illustration, fresco, Photoshop, UI, UX, graphic design, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of good stuff. And those live forever. We have a backlog of probably thousands of streams. Go watch them. So, so many. Amazing. All right, let's get back to this. Checha says, I use, I worked a full, oh, sorry. I used to mask to put the shadows and don't lose the texture of the brush. Oh, cool. So you use masks in that way. Okay. Nice. Awesome. We've got about 25 minutes until we're going to be doing reviews for the daily creative challenge. I'm going to check and see. Oh, I see we have four submissions, five submissions. Yes. They're coming in. I want to get at least 10 before we reach review time. Okay. Chat, you can do it. Even if you're still working, you uh, need to just take a pause and upload your work in progress. It's all good. It's always good to get some other eyes on your work. <laughs> Have you tried drawing on an iPad with two pencils? I don't think that works. Oh, I think you can only question. use one because it's Bluetooth, so you'd only have to be connected to one. Nice. So we're moving on to the second character now. Yes. Very cool. Do you have ideas of their personalities? Like the ones on the right seem a little bit more intense. She is definitely more 
be attention grabber mm -hmm. because look at her posture. Yeah. And the weapon she got, she's gonna beat the hell out of you. Uh huh. Yeah. Like an iron pipe. Mm hmm. <laughs> and this guy is totally just a sidekick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sidekick. Yeah, sidekick. I feel like the lady on the right is more of like the the graceful like. She'll beat the crap out of you, but like look real good doing it. She's an executive marketer in this team. Oh, okay. She brands this team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's got it. Yeah, she got it. She's <laughs> kind of brand. Paul wants to know how much time do you usually spend on an editorial illustration? It depends. Um, if it's a spot illustration, which uh, ranged to four by five inches to six mm -hmm. inches, I would say, I would say two days. Gotcha. You do like sketches. Preliminary work the first day, and the second day you, you spend like four to five hours to our final painting. Just doing it. Yeah, because my illustration you can see is very simple. Right. And very stylized, so it's not very realistic, and I don't really approach lighting or lights and shadow. Mm, mm -hmm. So it saves a, a lot of my time. Gotcha. Yeah. And is that usually the actual time you have to spend on it, two days? Is that how quick the turnaround is? Or is that just because you're busy with other stuff? It really depends on the details. Mm. Details and how the client wants, how complex the image and mm -hmm. composition um, they want. Gotcha. So it's always good to talk to your the person you work with. It's like, how complex is this, mm -hmm. this thing I'm doing? How complex, um, what kind of color you want? You want limited palette? You want a full palette mm -hmm. with lights and shadow? It's gonna cost more, and it's gonna take more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important to iron out those details mm -hmm. before you get started, because the worst is when you are pretty much done, and they're like, actually, that's not what we wanted. Right. Ugh. Communicate. Yeah, don't be scared to ask questions. Right, Seriously. I know like communication is not a strong suit for a lot of artists, mm -hmm. but it's also really important you're doing your art as you're connecting with people. Yeah. Right, you're connecting your idea. Mm -hmm. So talk to them. Yeah. And it really will save you time. It'll save you having to work over the weekend or all night because you didn't ask the questions that you were too scared to ask. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So that was for spot illustration. What about like a full bleed or full spread? Full spread. Uh, if we're talking about children's book, full spread. Mm -hmm. Final painting is at least take me 10 plus hours. And of course, there's preliminary work. There's like thumbnails mm -hmm. and refined sketches and uh, color roughs, I I would say 30 30-ish hours. Yeah. I can really I, I can only ballpark because all processes are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like even with a relatively simple style, it's right. still a big thing with a lot of design elements. Yeah. Oof, that stresses me out just thinking about doing like a full <laughs> spread painting. <laughs> it's crazy. And a children's book, it's like 18 spreads. Oh yeah. Oh man. It's a lot of work. In school, I took a children's book class and we had to do an entire children's book. How do you like, like it? It was awesome, but uh -huh. it's so much. Yeah. You have to do so much. Very time consuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Erica Larson? Hey. One of my very favorite people is joining us. Uh, Erica is loving the flat layers. Thank you. Me too, Erica. Erica is an awesome designer oh. as well. Hi, Erica. Hello. Uh, MD says, I'm excited to see some of the big announcements for Photoshop and Fresco at Mass. Max. Mm. Me too. How do we know? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, right. Seriously, stay tuned, chat. We're going to be streaming from Max next week, and we're going to be streaming the keynotes. So when the people are actually announcing what these new products are, you can watch that here. Uh, we're going to be streaming the keynote on the first day, and then right after it's over, we're going to hop over to the booth where we will be streaming, and we will have. Uh, people talking about what was just announced. So demoing things, getting hot takes from designers, seeing what they think. It's gonna be really cool. I'm sure there's things that I don't even know about, so I'm excited. Makes me sad I couldn't be there this year. Oh, I'm sorry, you yeah, wanna go. come packed in our suitcases? That'd be great. We'll just pull that you in. Nice. Can you fit in a carry-on? I'll try. I Bro. think I'm too tight, not flexible yeah. enough. <laughs> We'll have like a full body carry on. Right. Just that, you. This is a statue I'm going to put in my room. Yeah. It's actually a human. <laughs> Don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kerwin says, I love revisions, especially last minute ones. Oh, it's yeah. like a magic surprise at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, Paul wants to know do you have to be in a guild for children's books? There is an organi organization, um, what's it called? I really can't remember. I'm not sure about this information, I think. Mm -hmm. 
I would think not because、um, I actually self published my children's book on、wow. Amazon, but I'm not in the guild. Right. So there's a lot of way. I think join the guild is really good for you to know the community,、mm-hmm. know the current professional who's working,、yep. and share experience with them and get some knowledge out of their pick their brain. Yes. Right. It's like joining a network. Right. Something like that. Yeah. But not. Necessary, like I don't think it's against the law <laughs> to make a children's book without being part of the guild. Right.、Um, that's so funny. I feel like I'm in like a video game. The guild. The guild. <laughs> Paul wants to know: Is Photoshop for iPad still releasing in 2019? You're just gonna have to watch the keynotes, Paul. Learn more about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's my hook to get you to come watch. Be there.、Mm-hmm. Oh, watch us. Uh, Leroyce wants to know how do you come up with the pricing for your work? Oh God, there is a book called Artists、um, Ethic. Ah,、uh, the ethics. Yep, yep, yep. I know what you're talking about. That book is the Bible of pricing for me personally. But since now I have an agent, so I I let agent do all the work. <laughs> yeah. <in> pricing. <laughs> right. Yeah.、Uh, But definitely go get that book. Great reference. The Graphic Artist Guild Handbook of Pricing and Ethical Guidelines. Yes, very <laughs> that long. <one> yeah, <laughs> and there's different ones. There's graphic. I think there's even an illustration one specifically. Right. Other kinds. Yeah, it's hard to talk about like the nitty gritty of specific amounts、mm-hmm. because everyone has different experience levels.、Um, your past work can sometimes inform how much you would charge,、uh, but definitely check out that book. And the size of the clients is、mm-hmm. different, and how it's going to be used. Right. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, Erica, great question.、Uh, she's wondering about how your color palettes happen. How do you choose your colors? Ooh. Okay, so because this one is talking about environment issue and just a waste reduction,、mm-hmm. with the three character using their reusable utensils, bags,、uh, water bottles, standing on a little cute little sprout. So I want everything to look green. Mm-hmm. So you create the mood of green, healthy, you know,、uh, refreshing. But I also want to draw the attention on the characters. So I use warm color. I try different oranges,、mm-hmm. you know, like、um, yellow. But I also want to balance it out with a little blue. And gray and brown is a really good neutralized color. So you put in, and just play with it with your color rough. You know, like maybe the shirt should be pink, but the skin is pink. I don't want to look all together and blend together. So you, I choose. The shirt to be beige,、mm-hmm. and with with the orange hair. Yeah. Yeah. Try it out. Play it around with your color rough. That's why preliminary work in my process is so important because、yeah. you never know. You can make a mistake, and just change it.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really easy. Yeah. It's important to think about、um, how colors work together too.、Okay. Like, do you want them to feel opposite? Then you might use colors on other sides of the color wheel. Do you want it to feel like it's all the same idea? Maybe use analogous colors. Erica says, "I had an existential crisis when I learned what I was supposed to be charging for freelance work." <laughs> yeah, I think everybody has that problem. It's surprising. It's very realistic. I mean, your time is worth money, and so are your skills. Yes, that is one thing very important. Always know your artist, your time, and your skill is so much valuable than other、yeah. career. <laughs> yeah. So when people say, "You sh- can I do free work for you to expose for your exposure?" No. No. Is the doctor gonna do a surgery for、yeah. exposure? No. No way. And、Just、like I was saying earlier, like being an artist and having these literal skills, yeah, it's not something that most people have. Like、right. it's valuable. It's really valuable. I think some people would disagree, but they shouldn't. <laughs> they shouldn't, you know, because think of the time you if you go to art school, you buy this. Expensive equipment, you know,、mm-hmm. and your time, you know, how much you invest. That's、yeah. a lot of money and time. Yep. Yeah, and that's why you call art work. Quote on Yuko Shimizu: Art work is work. Yep. So true. So true. Yep. Erica, exposure doesn't put food on the table. Oh no. Uh uh. <laughs> Lindsay says, "I know I undercharge based on the nearest metropolitan area, but I am a bit high for my suburban area. That's tough." Yeah, you kind of have to figure out like where you are geographically, what's being charged, what's the cost of living. Right. Tough. Paul says exposure won't pay for an Adobe subscription. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't. How dare you, Paul? <laughs> How dare you? No, it's you okay. <laughs> Speak your mind, Paul. It's no, okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>、um, yeah, not to mention the cost of art education. 
It is too much. Mm -hmm. Too high. <clears throat> Shike says, if I was in your place, I would have done the whole work within 10, 15 minutes. No way, Shike. This is tough. And I'm also talking to Alec the whole time and bothering him. <laughs> yeah. Want to chat? You yeah. Know? Let us know. Yes. Do you have any questions? It's yeah. definitely also the idea of uh, do you work quickly, but then not learn anything from what's going on around you? Like, I'm sure there are times when you have a really quick deadline that you just have to really oh, yeah. settle in and just like boom, boom, boom. Right. Because this job. is actually quite a simple illustration. Um, but I just want to show them because I, I think they're very special for me. I mm -hmm. love the topic. I love the, I'm really proud of gesture it creates. Yeah. So taking it slow and share with you guys. Definitely. Yeah. We got nothing but time. Okay. Also, we're going to be back tomorrow yeah. for another stream. Right. Excited for that. Same time, same place. And then in about 10 minutes, we're going to be doing design feedback. Let's see how many we have left. We said we wanted to have 10. We have one, two, three, four, five. Still five. We need five more. Another five more. In the next five minutes. Yeah, it's called art work, not art free. There you go. Uh, Checho wants to know what your favorite brush is. Is it this one? So far, this one, yes. So far. Um, the second one will be the watercolor, the life brush. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beautiful. I do that with my personal work. Uh, my professional work, I need to keep it consistent, so I haven't right. really used that in the pay work. That's but true. it's definitely, definitely worth the time to try it out. Wow, yeah. I guess I didn't really think about that. Like, your style is so cohesive, and I'm sure this is what people like hire you for. That's everything because mm -hmm. um, it's also when you do art and you sort of release this brand of yourself. Mm -hmm. This character, when you look, I recognize this is Kathleen. Yeah, right. So, so it's like building this brand for yourself yeah. through your work. Right, and it's also that idea that you should make the kind of work that you want to get hired to make. Right. Like if you hate drawing cars, you probably shouldn't be posting pictures of cars that you drew because people will be like, well, they can draw cars. And some of my friend will like d disagree with me. He say, "But I want to do everything, you know." Mm -hmm. I say, I, "I would say that's that's not right. That's that's not wrong either." Mm -hmm. But when you really think of a client pay you, let's say two thousand dollars for this piece, and what they want to really see is what's the consistency of the things you produce. Mm -hmm. So you need to give a little trust to the client to let them to trust you as mm -hmm. well. So it's not about fully of what you like to do, but it's, it's sometimes you need to think of client is paying you yeah. for the service right. as well. Right, you're still solving the problem right. that they're asking you to right. solve. Um, and so I'm, I'm guessing when you have client work, it's probably not the best time to try out an entirely new technique. Right. Unless they say, we want you to try something new yeah. or do whatever you want. Uh, Timo wants to know, how did you get involved with an agency and did you get enough work to sustain yourself through them? So for my agency, I do research. I know agency will get, at first, I think that I do research on the internet. I know agency will have a cut on um, mm -hmm. every work I do, right. but I know they can negotiate a better price for me. They have a back, bigger clients mm -hmm. for me to do a bit, you know, like expose me quicker. Right. Um, so I went on Google, literally typing, so let's see what kind of geographic uh, area you want to do, like North America, yeah. that's agency. Sounds cliche, but you can just like have your list first yeah. and go through all the agency and see how, my, how many artists they present mm -hmm. and what kind of work they produce. If you want more attention from your agents, it's probably not, um, in my opinion, not really good to go with uh, like agency with a ton of illustri mm -hmm. illustrators. Right. But the best way is email them, talk to them. Right. They might have more agents in the agency, you mm -hmm. never know. Talk to them. Yeah, and, doesn't hurt. Right. So do research. Cool. And talk to them, send emails. Right. And send them your portfolio. This is the work I do and I'm very proud of it. Can you, can you present me? There's a bunch of whole things about typing a cold email through agent. You can research Googles mm -hmm. and a lot of books will talk about it too. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, so good luck, Tima. If you want an agent, I hope you get one be very cool. And what you uh, mentioned earlier about you need to make sure you have a lot of work before you go to an agent. Like if you have three things in your portfolio, they're going to be like... Right. At what? least <laughs> at least 12 to 15 pieces with co cohesive um, style. Oh, that's yeah. really good to know. Did you hear that chat? 
write that down. It's important. <laughs> Lindsay says, when I have someone unwilling to pay my prices, I direct them to the local college art department and see if it would be more interested in assigning the project for a class to solve. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's always good to um, offer an alternative. Right. Especially as an illustrator, you're like, I don't have time for this right now, but my fellow illustrator, Alec, does awesome work too, so go check it out. Oh God, yeah, that happens a lot actually. Mm -hmm. People knows you through someone who like, oh, this person will suit your style better mm -hmm. than for the email. Yeah. You gotta work. Right, that's the best thing about having friends who are artists too. We help each other out. Mm -hmm. uh, Kerwin says, when someone doesn't want to pay my prices, I just tell them good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Efficient and polite. I yeah, like right. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Uh, Paul says, I've never used the shortcut button in Fresco, the little touch shortcut. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly tell me what it does? So when you hold it, this button, they will use as an eraser, but using your current brushes. Let's say I'm using natural anchor. So when I hold this shortcut button, they erase as a sh uh, natural anchor yeah. brush. So it still has the same texture and everything. the same everything. texture and width, yes. Perfect. Yeah, and like I said earlier, you can change what the touch shortcut does to have different actions, but that is probably the most common one. Uh, Kerwin wants to know, do you ever collaborate with other artists? I do. I actually, um, I'm collaborating with my dear friend Leo Nino. Mm. Uh, we're doing this editorial book. Cool. And sort of just document um, what we think should be changed. You know. Interesting. You just we want people to see this illustration book and think of oh what 2019 is is doing, mm -hmm. what's happening, right. so we can improve collectively in the future. Wow. Yeah. So you're talking about what about your personal style you want to change or just kept the whole editorial landscape? Whole editorial landscape. Gotcha. That's it. Human rights should be this, equal pay should be that. You know, mm -hmm. we will, we'll make our work to use our voice and let people know what we think. Wow. Yeah. We're, it's still under process. We're still working on it. Mm -hmm. We don't know when it's going to be released, so stay tuned. Gosh, I was going to ask, when is it coming out? No, not yet. I want it. Take my money. Take my money. <laughs> Yeah, Erica, that touch shortcut is magic. It is. So I think I was telling you earlier that I work on building tutorials mm -hmm. and like learning content. Right. So Erica also does. Ooh. And Erica was just working on a fresco tutorial. So I'm sure Erica might be picking up some little tips and tricks. Yes. Or maybe Erica has some tips and tricks for us after creating a tutorial. Oh, yes. Erica, what do you think is the most like hidden gem function in fresco what is the most magical piece let us know marquise wants to know how is he drawing with the texture is that just the brush it's yes. just a brush just the brush just a brush it's called <laughs> natural anchor um, <laughs> under ink category so yeah look at that beautiful i know it's pretty it's like a little dry but not too see-through right very very nice Oh, Kerwin, that's so interesting. He says, we had an assignment, it was called The Devil's Advocate, where we had to market against noble causes. So, so like, painful. saying that human rights were not a thing. <laughs> you know, I think, I think that's great because critical thinking is really valuable totally. for artists. Yeah. So sometimes people think this is right, but maybe you think it's wrong. And Again, use your art. Right. Why, why is it wrong? Why is mm -hmm. it right? You know, make a debate out of it. That's how we, that's how we communicate, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Erica says that load last selection is a hidden gem in Fresco. Load last selection. Yeah. So you can make selections in Fresco just like you would with like the lasso tool in Photoshop, and then you can deselect it. But in Photoshop, you can then you know reselect, uh, and you can do that in Fresco. Okay. Very awesome. Gotta try. Oh no, Kerwin says I had to make a pro child labor brand package and campaign. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's put those children to work. <laughs> they gotta pay the rent somehow. Uh, start <laughs> early, man. Oh yeah, start early. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That's terrible, but it's a good exercise. <laughs> Uh, Tima says, it seems like you're encouraging artists to have a distinctive style. 
Definitely. Um, but Tima says, I see styles like hats. I feel so bored wearing the same hat every day. You know, that's what I'm saying. You, your style will evolve mm -hmm. through, the, through the years you yeah. start in your career. Maybe my, m m you, you will see my style will be flat mm -hmm. and no lights and shading. Maybe in the future, I want to slowly add in texture so my clientele won't say I change the style too much. Mm -hmm. and not how you mean. Right. So you, you start involved. Your, your style will evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But if you feel bored, make some personal projects, you mm -hmm. know, inspire yourself and try different brushes. Yeah. It's a good way to, very good way to self taught mm -hmm. and just always, always keep yourself interested in the things you, you're doing. Right. Yeah. And Tima, I feel similar to you, mm -hmm. whereas I, I have a couple different styles that I like to balance in between, and it's okay. You know, like it's okay to have your work look a little bit different. You're not always gonna be as cohesive as Alec is. Like this is amazing. To be honest, I feel bored sometimes doing my own work too. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I literally just draw something else. You mm -hmm. know, do a little quick comic or using using watercolors, you know, a traditional medium. Yeah. Right. Just it's, get that interest back. It's kind yeah. of like a sacrifice you make yeah. to get clients to really trust your style, right. you have to show them a singular one, but it is a sacrifice, yeah. personally. It's all good though. Because when illustration was, when people hire you as an illustrator, they think of you providing the service they need. Mm -hmm. So how do you brand that service, like Adobe product, or brand your service as Patreon patron? Mm -hmm. So you, you need to let people distinctly know who you are. Right. Then they will pay money for it. Right, yeah, let yeah. them know what they're paying for. Totally, but yeah, Tima, I'm on your team. I get yeah, you. Yeah, it's all totally good. I feel you. <laughs> Erica says, for the load last selection, if you make a complicated selection to mask something, and then you long press the lasso, you can load the last selection and reuse it if you want to create a fill layer on top. Cool. You could even make a fill layer and then move it over a little and change the mode to like overlay and have that offset. That'd be cool. Be very cool. Oh, Kara's also chiming in about the style. Mm -hmm. A style is always a battle for me. I think most of my work is super bold, but I'd love to focus more on a style. I'm always wanting to try new things. I know. You, you just got to try new stuff. Yeah. Pick the favorite things and just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. then... Yeah, what feels best. Right. Yeah. But Kara, I know, when I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling through and I see a post, I'm like, yep, that's her work. <laughs> and then I look at the little profile picture. I'm like, oh, yeah, it really is. Got you nailed down. Got you nailed down. <laughs> cool, we have about a minute and a half until we're gonna be doing a design feedback for the Daily Creative Challenge. Yeah. So we're gonna take a step away from illustration okay. and jump into photo manipulation for Photoshop. Today's challenge is to create a water effect. Uh, Jesus was just streaming the Daily Creative Challenge before this. So we're gonna be checking out your submissions. And if you wanna learn more about the challenge, you can click the challenge tab over here above the chat pod. Uh, but we'll look at those in about a minute. All right. And then we'll have a couple minutes to finish out the day. Very cool. Asadul, this is Adobe Fresco. It is a mobile application uh, where you can draw and paint and smile. It's a great, it's a great app. Are you filling in the pants right now? Yes. Oh, nice. Haha! -ha. I love that color of pink. It's very trendy. And very calming too. Mm hmm It's similar to the skin tone of the woman in the center. Yes. It has that cohesive feel. So the one thing about a limited palette, you let things keep bouncing mm -hmm. uh, in different shapes. So it carries, it carries the eyes yeah. going to this and there. Right. So that's how really, I think that's how my interpret, mm -hmm. interpreted limited palette. Yeah. If you have a different opinion, please let me know. No, I but, feel the same way. Yeah. I love a limited palette. I think it's hard, harder really? to use for me. Oh, it's easier for my brain. I like don't have to think about it too much. Sometimes I saw like, different artists use it so well mm -hmm. in like a full full page illustration with like different characters and yeah. with six colors. It's like, how do you do it? Yeah. How do you make them look different? Talk to me. T tell me a secret. Tell me. Please. I love it though. If I have the whole gamut of the yeah. color range to choose from, I'm like, too much. Yeah. Because I love adding random colors into my work, so I right. gotta keep it limited or else it will look crazy. Not good. 
<laughs> Tima says uh, he just had to work on a weird project. Last week I had to design a casket top. Mm. It was imprinted on vinyl and applied to the casket. Wow. What was it, Tima? Yeah, I'm really interested in what it is. <laughs> yeah. It? A personalized casket? I mean, I'd probably want that. It's amazing. Tima says limited color is the best. Yeah, Tima, I agree. Your work is very limited and cool. Love it. Okay, do you wanna do some design feedback? All right. So, like I said a couple minutes ago, today's challenge was to make a water effect, and I'm just gonna look in the current challenge get feedback channel on Discord, and let's look. So this is Ken's submission from yesterday. Yesterday was the glass effect. Okay. So let's look at this water effect water from effect. Ahmed. Oh, cool, it has oh, a, like nice. a leather jacket. Yeah. Let me open the original, see if it's bigger. Nice. And then it has this kind of rain pattern in the background to draw it all together. That's beautiful. When do you think this would be used? Like in a product campaign or something? Yeah, I would see that it's really a product campaign. It's mm -hmm. on a magazine or it's on the fashion website. Hero say, this is a jacket we released. Yeah. It's, it's waterproof. Exactly. It'll be a very effective hero image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of has this almost fantastical feel to it. Yeah. Uh, but it's saying like, this jacket is waterproof. Yeah, so I think it, one thing I will add on to make it more, um, you know, maybe more pop, is maybe adding a little more highlights on the watercolor drop. Oh, yeah. So when you add that, that white dot, a little white dot on the water, mm -hmm. it will make it just look so real. Right. The water was right in your face. Right. Yeah. I agree. Like, I think that the whitest part is kind of right here in the center. Right. So your eye goes here and then the rest kind of blends in a little bit. Right. It'd be nice to add more of those whites in. Cool, nice job. Nice job, that's really good. All right, this is by imitating. Realized after I started that I don't yet know how to add the effects of mass rain splatters. Mm. Maybe one day when I learn how to do that, I will revisit the assignment. Oh, this is so simple. Simple composition. Oh, very simple. So a zoomed in piece, we have some, I think, supposed to be like water reflections. Right. And then this beautiful reflection of the bird, some ripples. Really good job on the reflection of the crane, the yeah. bird. Did you do this? I imitating, if you're here. Yeah. Did you actually flip the image and reflect it? That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm hmm I feel like the water that's coming off of the feet looks a little disconnected from the actual bird. Right. It's almost as if it's almost too big to uh, match this bird. Because since it is so big and it's flying off of it, it makes me feel like the bird's moving very quickly. Yeah. But I don't think it is due to how the ripples look. I think maybe like few reference to how people, how the animal lift the legs mm -hmm. and then brought the water up on the surface yeah. will work. Right. Cause I feel like more naturally. The water would be more over here since it's lifting its leg forward and right. pushing it forward. Yeah. Science, man. Art yeah. is science. But I like this composition. It almost feels like it could be like a book jacket. Right. So we have maybe in nice... the background, I was thinking maybe do a little bit more darker gray gradient yeah. in the back. So mm -hmm. you can bring that whiteness of the color more to create the focal point of the crane. Right. So it's really coming yeah. towards you instead of just all flat. Right, because now it's kind of disappearing in the mm -hmm. background. Nice, good tip. All right, this is by Owana. Here is my submission. Oh, cool, so it's an actual illustration. Oh, right. nice. Yay, speaking our language. Look at how beautiful. I love that texture of the water. Yeah. yeah. Is this hand-painted? Who is this by, Owana? Owana, if you're here, let us know how you made this. Right. Because these look hand-painted. Maybe they create their own brush and just using different, oh. different colors and painted rep yeah. repeatedly. You know, I think during the challenge I saw Jesus using a brush. Uh -huh. So maybe that's what it was. That's very effective. Cute. Also a limited palette using kind of a, a pop of color in the cheeks. That's really nice. So cute. Yeah. What do you think about this top right area? Does it feel like it needs something or is it okay? I think if you can add more bubbles mm -hmm. on the very top so it won't feel like the composition is so cut in the middle. So right. yeah, if, if things you play, if illustration-wise or image-wise you place the things in the dead center, 
um, the audience eyes won't move around. Mm -hmm. So maybe break that pattern in the, in the water service, kind of have me lower it on, on one third of the whole image, yep. and add more bubbles on the top right. So people will tra people's eyes will travel yeah. through the whole image instead of there's a big white space here, mm -hmm. empty space here. Right, especially yeah. since the rain is coming at a diagonal, mm -hmm. it'd be great if these bubbles almost kind of followed it a little right. bit more. Because yeah. right now it feels like diagonal, this way, and then bubbles are this way. Yeah. It'd be nice if they whoosh. Yeah, create that rhythm. Yeah, Oana says that's an awesome tip. Awesome. I really do love these kind of pink it's cheeks. It's so adorable. Yeah. I'm using those complimentary colors. Very good. Got a little bikini shot from yeah. Sean. So we got the water coming off the model. Nice. So this does a good job of breaking it up into thirds. Right. Um, but I do feel like the lighting on the model is a little strange with it being like a rainy scene. Because it looks like this picture was taken in the sun. Right. Maybe choose a, a model with a gesture with like, you know, going in, in you know, like in the process of the motion. Yeah, that's and true. And follow through with the water mm -hmm. will make, make more sense. Right, because it kind of looks like she's not moving. She's just right. kind of posing, and then the water is somehow moving around her. Yeah. Yeah, so that'd be really cool. Like in, in your pieces where they're like standing in these dynamic poses. Yeah, if you can find a picture of this model, maybe like doing the, you know, doing the arm, like going mm -hmm. up. Or the you hair add moving. A, you add a water here. Mm -hmm. The yeah. motion will follow through. Nice job, Sean. All right, this is Eve. I did not return on time, but this is my first participation. So is this, I'm not sure what this challenge number was for, but maybe we can just give some feedback anyways. Um, looks like, Eve applied some adjustment layers. I love that. I love the color. Yeah. These colors are not very peaceful, but everything else is kind of saying peace. Right. Because you use a color is so vibrant. Mm -hmm. And but the but the facial expression of this character is this inner peace and create this like a mood contrast. Mm -hmm. I think it's very effective. Yeah. Yeah. I love this little piece at the top left, and I wish we saw it more, where these little grid oh, yeah, squares. Oh, yeah, there's a texture there. It almost looks like a pixel right. crunching. Yeah. And I'd love to see that anywhere else. Right. You see it down here and down here a little bit. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Jimmy says this model is a water bender. Did you watch Avatar? No. The Last Airbender? I know it, but I never watched oh, it. She is a water bender. Oh, this is cute. Ooh. Van Damme, nice job. So the cool thing about Van Damme his Van Damme is 13, really okay. young. Wow. Yes, oh, 10 years old, here we go. Certified associate, nice. Very great work. So this is a good example of something in motion and having right. the water really coming off of it. Yes. I like you, I like, like the water is hugging this monkey mm -hmm. when it's jumping. Such a happy monkey. It's beautiful. I think this works super well and mm -hmm. so does this, but around the tail, I'm a little confused about this shape. So it right. feels like it's literally like a blob of water just sitting around the tail. Yeah. It'd be nice if it was almost splashing off like right. this. Going is. up and this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good job, though. Very nice, Van Dam. Oh, funny. This is by Gerard. Ooh. That's <laughs> really, very really funny. having that water bounce off the face. Yeah. Cool. Let's open it up a little bit bigger. I love how you've almost done a parallax. So you right. have a very blurry layer and then a sharp one. Really nice depth. Mm-hmm. There are a couple little pieces that might need a little more tweaking, like on this shoulder. You can see it disappearing, and it doesn't look super realistic. Right. So maybe just. And also maybe let the again let the waters. I think what make water really realistic is the highlight of the water reflect mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Reflects the the liquid, that makes the water very lively. Yeah. So. I agree. To highlight. Get some more values in there. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got, oh, two more. Let's Ooh. do it. All right, this is by Kirsty. Uh, this is a sunset with water coming up from the sea. Interesting. Nice. So it looks like you used the fiber filter to add this rain filter. Wow. Very nice. Beautiful picture, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. I'd love to see it. I like this idea of like water coming up from the sea and mm -hmm. you're not really knowing why. Right. But it does feel a little bit copy and paste right now. Yeah. So it'd be nice if these little bottom pieces like blended into the water a little bit more. Right. It does it here a little bit. Yeah, because you want to, 
I don't know, maybe this this concept is making this water sort of having a life and come out of the surface. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. It's like the bottom part needs to be a little blend into the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And the beautiful orange and blue is always it a is. good combo. Oh, it looks so different. <laughs> That's crazy. Ooh, that is crazy. Okay, one more by Alistair. So I still need to work on the water edge. Oh, the edge with some shadow. It's hard to find a good balance. Also some shadow to make the water more realistic. But it is a work in progress. Great totally. contrast. Whoa, what a composition. Yeah. This freaks me out a little bit. And the water contrast is you, that's the that's the thing I'm saying, you know. This mm -hmm. you can see the blue the blueness of the water, but yeah. Those really lively, just like white highlights there really brings up the, the liquid. Yeah, that, I was just front. gonna say, that's how you make something look liquid. Right. So you have the really bright and the really dark kind of right next to each yeah. other. Good composition. Yeah. Very nice. Oof, this, I'm scared of like, it's like a Tsunami. tidal wave. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> but very cool. Very cool. Tells a story. It's almost like an editorial illustration. Yeah. Cool, great job, everybody. Thanks for getting these submitted good job. so quickly. Yeah. I hope you take some feedback in mind and maybe upload a new version before you upload it onto your Behance for your final. And then we have about 15 minutes left before the end of the stream. So maybe we can hop back to your illustration. Yeah, let's do it. And wrap it up. And maybe we can talk about too what you wanna do tomorrow. So tomorrow I just want to finish this piece mm -hmm. and I want to talk more about um, the process mm. and also I just want to share a little more experience how I become full-time illustrator. Definitely. I'm, not, I'm, I'm still really fresh. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm like very, very experienced, mm -hmm. but I think because artists need to build this community to feel all supported to each other. Mm -hmm. That's how we grow. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes if you just stay at, stay at home by yourself inside, yeah. you got kind of sad and isolated. Mm -hmm. But knowing there's people out there like Behance and Livestream, you can talk to people and talk to other people, connect with them. That builds a, you know, like the power of strength for you to actually keep going. Yeah. And it's very important. Super important, especially because you're talking about it gets discouraging. It is. When you're a new freelancer and it's a hard road to plow, so it's always great to have a community. Right. And we are here pretty much every day of the work week uh, live streaming something. <laughs> so if you just want to come and hang out, if you're having a rough day, if you're at work and you have us open on your second monitor, it's all good. Yeah. Come hang out. We'll always be here right. to support you. So we've been focusing pretty heavily on like Fresco and Photoshop and XD. So if you ever want to come and check any of those out, that's awesome. We're here pretty much 9 a.m. to 3, 9 to 3 ish, pretty much every day, with some different things peppered in on Fridays. Mm. <laughs> Shike likes the the monkey. Yeah, that was a cool monkey. That's that really good. Van Dam did. Very impressive. Boom. So are you working on any freelance projects right now? Um, I just finished one, but I couldn't Ooh. talk about it because it's not published. Not yet. Yeah. Ugh, that must be hard. Like always working on things that no one's gonna see for a long time. If it's published, it's gonna be on my Instagram and share with everybody. Yeah, so follow me. Get yeah, it. actually I'll <laughs> open up your Instagram right now so people can check it out. See if I can remember it off the top of my head. Mm, I can't. <laughs> so the handle will be NK Alec Lou. NK. Uh, there we go. Did I get it? Nice. There you go. Cool. Right. So if you want to go follow Alec on Instagram, you'll know it's him because of this very good self portrait with his little pupper, pup. Polly. Uh, and you can give him a follow. I already do. But I'm going to unfollow and then follow again Thanks. to show you all how to do it. Boom, just quick follow. You can see beautiful work, a little Halloween illustration. Yeah, this one I do, this is for UNICEF and Visa Cute. for people to donate for children who needs around the world. Oh my gosh, there's so many little guys. So you can use this sticker in your Instagram story <gasps> by typing Visa. What? You have found them uh, in animated version, so it's really cool. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. Yeah, go into your story and Type in Visa in the GIF section and you can find those. They stickers. are so cute. Thank you. I love 
that. So please. I had so much fun. I bet. Just doing a bunch of like little assets and pieces. Yeah. That sounds amazing. It's a nice mixture of full bleed illustrations, spot illustrations, animations. Let's check out this little walk cycle. Walk cycle. Dude, I, I still can't get a walk cycle down. It still confuses me oh. so badly. There's a template. I know there yeah. is. <laughs> but you're just going to need to practice a lot to make it your own. Mm -hmm. right? That's so cute. It's not very smooth, but this is my first time, and, mm -hmm. I, and I really enjoyed the process. want to share with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just gave a how to follow on Instagram tutorial. Thank you. I'm an instructional designer. <laughs> follow them. It's amazing. Yeah, Philippa says the Adobe community is awesome. I'm so glad you think so. We're all just weird artists trying to find our way in the world. That's right. <laughs> Aaron says, oh, it's like Sesame Street for artists. Your friends are always here. Mm-hmm. Yep. What, you, what would you be if you're a Sesame character? Mm, I was just trying to think of the garbage guy. Oh. What's his name? Gra Grouchy? No. Is it Grouchy? Grouchy? It's been so long. Groucho? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. What's his Help name? Help us. Trash can man. That would be me. <laughs> I like Snuffleup, I guess. Snuffleup? Yeah. How about you? What would you be? I think I'd be Big Bird. Oh, yeah. I have a really long neck. I that think. makes sense. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. Oscar yes. the Grouch. Yep, that'd be me. Right. I'm not very grouchy, but I just like like his whole vibe. Just doing their own thing, mm -hmm. hiding in the trash can. Mm -hmm. You know, I also like how he's like shaggy and like green and kind of grungy. I know. <laughs> Jimmy says, you would not be Oscar. I know, I'm not grouchy, but I like him. Maybe I'd just be Elmo. I don't know. Elmo. Bernie? Ooh, I would be the orange one. Or No, uh, blue one. Blue Sesame Street character. Which one is that? Grover. Grover? Yeah. Ooh. He's super annoying, but he's got a good heart. <laughs> Me. <laughs> so cute. I do like Bert and Ernie, though. I like Ernie more. He's nice. Chat, what would you be if you're a Sesame Street monster? Monster. <laughs> Let us know. I don't even know all their names anymore. They've added new ones. It's been so long. Oh, maybe I'd be the Count. Mm-hmm. Little vampire action. Count Von Count. Count Von Count. Aaron says uh, they'd be at Abby Kadabi. She's relatively new, right? Abby Kadabi. She's so cute. Ooh, yeah. So cheery. Mm-hmm, got little fairy wings. Kerwin says, can I be a Muppet? I want to be Kermit. You can be a Muppet. Kermit. <laughs> awesome, Russing would be Crazy Cook. Cornelian would be Cookie Monster. Oh, cookie Monster. That'd be good too. I think last week on Adobe Live, we had some uh, Sesame Street impressions happening. <laughs> I think Chris Bernay has a very good Cookie Monster. <laughs> Uh, impression if you want to go back and watch those replays. Oh <laughs> cool, so we're on our third and final character. Yes. That's such a nice tone you chose for the skin. It's almost like a mustardy based uh, brown. Yeah. It's nice. Sometimes a little warmer on a darker skin tone. You can choose a little mm -hmm. warmish purple. That one works really good too. Yeah. But Adds this time life. I choose a little. Um, on the colder side. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Munir would be Cookie Monster or <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> Close. Not quite a Sesame Street character. Not quite. So we're starting with the face first. It's the best part. I like to start up the best <laughs> part. Do you always have your brush set at the same size no matter what you're working on? It depends. Um, if, since this is like a, I said this size a letter size, but I tilt it horizontally, mm -hmm. so the file size is a little bigger. Gotcha. So you can use a bigger brush. But sometimes if you only do like, um, some people want like sticker acid, it's mm -hmm. smaller. So naturally, even you zoom in, your brush size will be a little smaller. That's right. Like six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jordan Crawford just followed you. Thank you, Jordan. What's up, Jordan? <laughs> That's awesome. 
Shike likes the background music that's playing. Did you know there's background music playing? Really? Yes. Wait, it's what? Not Where? Just, it's not just us <laughs> talking into nothingness. Talk to me. Entity. Chad, if you could be here in the studio, you'd probably be pretty weirded out by how quiet it is. Yeah. <laughs> it just does. Lots of serenity here. Mm -hmm. It's very peaceful. Peaceful. I think one of the viewers that's here right now, Eric Sue, has been here because he was a streamer a couple weeks ago. Ooh. Very cool. Adobe Live success story. Uh, Riley wants to know, what is harder, drawing or coloring? Definitely drawing. I agree. Because there's a lot of design going to it, mm -hmm. and, and the white page scares me. <laughs> it's like, what if I put this character the pose is not right. What if the composition is shitty? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I shouldn't say it. it's horrible. Okay. Yeah, if it's then bad. It's bad. Then you get discouraged, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, you just need to tell yourself, keep designing, this arm is not working, and mm -hmm. bend the other way. If this building in the background not working, make it shorter, make it a house. Mm -hmm. So it's that design process yeah. scares me the most. But a final painting, you just, you know the layout, you know everything is prepped. Mm -hmm. You just go in there and feel, for me, just filling the colors. Right, yeah. right. Usually in the creative process, when you're adding color and you're mm -hmm. executing, yeah. that's when like your brain is kind of turned off and you're right. really just using your technical skills to fill in color or paint or render or whatever. But yeah, the drawing is when you're like solving the problems. What about yours? I think drawing's harder, yeah. for sure. Although my painting style is a little more involved and there's like a lot of colors and mm -hmm. blending, uh, but it's not hard. It's more fun yeah. to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So chat, we've got just a couple minutes left with Alec. If you have any last minute questions, get them sent over, but we'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Don't worry, 9.30 at ele uh, to 11.30. Then after me, is there an XD daily creative challenge? Mm -hmm. Yay, we've got our little Always. schedule coming up. Thank you, Paco. Always quick on the draw. Cool, so we've got Peter coming up next for XD. So it's a little bit of a, a switch in mindset. We're gonna be talking about uh, screen design and UI, UX, all that goodness. If you're a beginner, this is a great place to start with Peter because it's uh, beginner friendly. And then at 12, we're gonna have more XD goodness with Mandy Han coming up. So that'll fill out the afternoon and then we'll be back yeah. tomorrow. Uh, Aaron says, I'm checking out your Instagram and see that your illustrations sometimes use black outlines and sometimes they don't. Is there a science behind that? Um, so mostly I use black outline because I think black and white is such a two, it's not really colors, mm -hmm. but those two colors really tied up the whole illustration. So you'll see this is the one without black outline, mm -hmm. but I just want to check everything, uh, contrast, contrast, the, the contrast is, is, is good, it's not mm -hmm. really distracting on the background, it's focusing on more characters and their gestures, then when I add into the final touch of the black outline or the white outline, it ties everything together. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I think, maybe if we pop over to my screen really quick, yeah. I'll open up an example. Uh, the actual outline of the figures don't usually have a harsh outline, but when right. you do need to denote that there's like a shape within that larger shape, yeah, that's when you would might use. So when I painted, it just looked um, um, red, yeah. beige, and white. That's it. But when mm -hmm. you add the outlines, and it's just such a big amount of the black outline, mm -hmm. everything just ties together. Right. And so yeah. like for these pants, they're white and they're on a white background, so they need something. Yeah. But these don't. So it's really like being choosy. Yeah, and also. I think lines for me really draws people's attention too, mm -hmm. you know, because it's fluid, it's distinctive mm -hmm. and shape. Yeah. Probably the most, the highest contrast thing that you will have. Yeah. It's a strict black line. What's up? I can't read your name. I think it might be Flavors, <laughs> Flavor Tuts at the bottom. <laughs> it's so hard to read. Hello. But welcome, welcome. We will be heading out here in just a moment, but stick around for Peter Del Tondo's uh, XD Daily Creative Challenge tomorrow. Alec, or after this, tomorrow, Alec, we're going to be back finishing this up. We'll be back. Yes, more fresco goodness. So come back, ask your questions, maybe download fresco between now and then if you want to play with it and then we will talk to you then. So thanks everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.